You're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a new face for Greater Brockton, someone that we've seen on Brockton Community Access, uh, Gabby Peruccio. I yes, did it right? you did. Okay, <laughs> and we're going to talk about community gardens initiatives. First of all, what is that? Um, Jay booked you for my show, yes. and I don't know, and I don't know much about it except what we've talked about right before we went on air. Tell us about it. Sure. So a few years ago, Mass in Motion put in funding for community gardens. So you can see a lot of the the community gardens at the schools and at some community centers who have garden beds that were funded and put in by Mass in Motion. However, with the coalition that I coordinate, Brockton's Promise. We looked into the gardens to, and we saw that there wasn't m much resources going into them after that, after the funding went um, through. So we evaluated the gardens last spring with a mini grant through the Greater Brockton Health Alliance. And these evaluations showed that many of the schools and many of the centers, like the Council on Aging or one of the high rises, they didn't really have the resources to, to sustain them, mm -hmm. to put in new soil, to put in new seeds. Um, and then looking into like site coordinators and that type of sustainability. So there are about 19 community gardens identified in Brockton, whether they're on a small scale or large scale, like Brockton High has a lot of gardens that are sure. run by the students. Um, so we looked for further funding to support these gardens through the Healthy Start Initiative in Brockton's Promise. Um, Brockton's Promise reached out to the Greater Brockton Health Alliance for another grant, which was in the uh, amount of $5,000. Mm -hmm. So this year, we're going to put in resources and workshops for these gardens that applied for the, these resources. So that's um, where we are now, and um, our first workshop will be actually next week. So we will provide a workshop to community garden leaders who will then take these skills and kind of develop their with the students and the community members. Um, so kind of train the trainers type of a thing, right. right? And I'm sure a lot of the site coordinators know what they're doing, but this will give them more of a refresher and how to really utilize the resources we're giving them to um, develop further in the 2016 growing season, so next spring. So you said this one next week. We're not going to date it too much because we want this to go right. for a little while mm -hmm. and be able to publicize it. Where would you be doing the workshops and yeah. how often? So there's going to be a series of three or four workshops. This will be the first one. Um, it's actually held at this farm at Stonehill College, but mm -hmm. we will be looking to have the other two to three workshops in Brockton. Um, there's a couple gardens in Brockton that are larger that can be... Um, they can hold the garden workshops. So at um, the Arnone or Massasoit, um, they're really lovely. We have a lot of pictures of them, and you can even visit them. We're encouraging more community involvement, even if they're at a school mm -hmm. or, let's say, the Council on Aging. Um, I'm so, familiar with the one at Massasoit. I teach there, so yeah. I get to see that one over Very there. And nice. that's a bigger one, too. The one at Brockton High is impressive. It's, oh, it's yeah. huge. We cover Summerfest there, and mm -hmm. you get to see all of that stuff because it's right in the height of the, the growing season in right. the middle of the summer. And those are clearly sustained by the students, which is great, and that's what we hope for. So I'm looking at the list, mm -hmm. and uh, I need glasses again to look at this, but uh, which I don't wear. <laughs> I probably should. Boys and Girls Club, Council okay. on Aging, uh, the Family Center, Community Connections. The f so they're an interesting site because once they moved sites, they mm -hmm. still have a couple garden beds in their old location on Perkins. Street. Mm -hmm. Now that they're on Main Street, they're looking to put in garden beds. So we're going to help them develop that with some resources. So they're going to kind of transfer their bed to their new location, which is going to be beautiful because they have a big lawn. They have, it's, it's huge over there. It's really And they'll big. probably be more of like a, um, a, a garden that's going to be able to be utilized for workshops as well in the future. Now I see the Campello, you mentioned the Council on Aging, the Campello Senior High Rise. There's a lot of people in that building, so, right. and they grow, I'm assuming there's vegetables and stuff mm -hmm. that you can eat, so there's that. There's a couple residents who um, maintain the garden and then they get to eat the, the produce. Um, it's, it's pretty big and beautiful. Um, so that's at the Campello High Rise, and I believe that's one of the only ones um, at the High Rise. Yeah. There's lots of high-rises, so maybe they see the success of that one, and then it can spread out from there. We've got one at the Y, the Frederick Douglass Garden, the famous Beautiful. Frederick Douglass Garden that we, we were just in a week ago covering an event. They put on the new up. signs up that the kids from Southeastern Voc Tech mm -hmm. built um, and helped out Lynn. I 
I'm on the school committee there, and I'm looking at the schools. You know, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve schools. That's great. Right. So um, they use those more for lesson plans. The kids get to take, you know, initiative in developing them, and then sometimes they get to eat them or get, they get to donate them. So. I think that's one of the best aspects of the community gardens because they get to learn from it as well. So it's kind of run, you're paid through, you know, AmeriCorps, mm -hmm. but pretty much everybody else that's involved in this, they're, 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 they're some, most of them are volunteers, some of them might be employees of some of those organizations. Right, so we have identified the site coordinators. When I say site coordinators, it, it's really a teacher or a community member who've taken it on. And we're really just here to support them. We, we saw that there was lack of resources and we felt that we could step in and, and provide those. But um, I'm, we're kind of just here for support and they're, they're there for the sustainability. So for them to take it on and, and and to um, develop it further, but yeah. Well, we're going to have to follow up because when it's nice out and it's growing in the start of the season or the end of the season, we're going to have to bring a camera over there and oh. see all this stuff. And and you can get some of the kids doing the lessons with the resources, and we'll have some workshops. And it, they're open to the public, so not just the, the leaders of the gardens. The, they're going to be open to the public. So. Well, let us know how we can add, if I can keep this on TV for a while, we can tag it with... The, the date of like the next workshop Absolutely. and where it is. We have a community bulletin board as well, so we can right. post it on our channel. How would people get in touch with you and uh, if they want to know more, if they want to see more? Mm -hmm. um, they, can, they can look up more information at www.brocktonspromise.org or they can reach me at 508-565-1959 uh, and that's my direct phone. Um, I can also provide email. Go ahead. Do the email too. Sure. It's G Peruccio, P is in Paul, E R U C C I O at Stonehill.edu. Well, um, what haven't I asked you about? Or what point do you want to get across that maybe we didn't cover? Honestly, I think um, we are here to provide the resources and workshops as much as we can throughout this year. But after that, we really hope that um, the city or the schools or they take on some of that sustainability as well because it, each year there will have to be resources provided to these gardens to keep them sustainable, new compost, new seeds. Um, mm -hmm. But we just really hope that the, the community gets more engaged in the community gardens so they're a really great resource for teaching, for produce, for local and healthy options. So I think that's one of the most important things about them. Two ideas I'll talk to you about offline, but uh, you know we've got a great garden club in Brockton. Mm -hmm. who they could get involved. Right, and I've then, reached out um, to them. Um, up in Maine, I go away in the summer, and there's a Rotary Club mm -hmm. up in Maine that does a community gardens project at their community center, so that makes sense. So we're right. going to have to figure that one Absolutely. out and see if we can add more people into the mix. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being on Greater well, Brockton. Thank you for having me. And we'll follow up, and we'll check it all out and see more. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.